All right, so I'm here with the Ohio Model Products Big Horn. Uh, given it's maiden flight here, I have not flown this. We took it around the pattern to make sure the controls are working. Got our elevator, our rudder, got her a little trimmed out. Uh, got our flaps going. I'll tell you, it's a good flying plane. Took right off there pretty quickly. Probably do a little more uh, expo. It's a little, little on the touchy side on the sticks. but a uh, very responsive aircraft. It's a low speed pass. Now, I'm not a super seasoned RC pilot here. This is uh, probably about my 50th RC flight. Um, I find that this is a pretty easy to fly aircraft. Um, out of the box, there was very little work to do. Um, yeah, it's flying great. Oh yeah, no issue flying. Oh yeah, no issue flying. Oh yeah, no issue flying a loop. No issue whatsoever flying a loop. Kind of lost perspective for a second there. So that's the five minute warning. I'm not particularly concerned about the five minute alarm because it's just the initial model setting and it had quite a bit of battery left before when we took it on the trim flight. So, whew, a little bit of a rough landing there. So 
so there it is, the Ohio Model Products Bighorn. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, it flies great. The quality of flight was uh, was really good. Um, you know, being a not very experienced RC pilot, I, I had no problem taking it up and flying it around. Um, now, I flew it for five, min five minutes of flight on a 2200, and we'll see what we got. Sixty-one percent, so three point nine per cell. So I mean, easily, you know, I overflew it by about thirty seconds. So, uh, you know, I'm going to definitely add a minute, and we'll see where we'll go from there. So there it is, Ohio Model Products Bighorn Maiden Flight. Uh, very, you know, no no issues uh, really at all. Took it right up, kind of seamless. Uh, and again, the fit and finish of this uh product uh right out of the box uh, really impressed with everything and sure enough it uh, flew as expected all right so i don't usually do unboxing videos and i don't think i'm gonna do a full video here but um i just wanted to take a minute this is uh the omp bighorn uh, and I'm getting this thing unboxed uh, and I just wanted to show you the fit and finish and quality of this model when it comes out of the box um, I've built probably six kits in the last two months and as people have probably built more but I've built about six kits and the fit and finish and quality of uh, the packaging Every, every single servo or servo horn is protected with, with a foam piece and like the tape that they put on is perfect where it doesn't leave a mark on the on the coating that's on the airplane it just peels right off um, look at the ends like there's no there's no loose ends um, I, I have no issue saying that there is no possibility that I could have built the <laughs> I would not have come out like this. I, I've built a, a balsa wood plane and, and covered it. Um, and the results weren't too, too bad. But I wouldn't have come out anywhere. I mean, this is... Uh, the fit and finish on this thing is just phenomenal. I mean, it is really well done. Um, these pieces... Are, are really just outstanding the uh, you know these are not stickers these are coating put on in layers um, it's to me what I would call the highest grade of fit and finish from a home custom build that would take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and it's right out of the box like this Every piece is individually packaged in its own plastic bag that is taped shut. <laughs> I mean, um, it, it, it's if I was to say how would I improve this packaging in airplane, I don't even I don't have an answer. It's like it was done to the best of ability. Uh, I mean, look at the fit and finish on the graphics on the airplane. Look at the the inc uh, inc um, intricacy of the colors, the multiple colors set on top of each other, uh, and there's not a loose corner. There's not uh, uh, the fit and finish is just phenomenal. Everything. I mean, look, it's, you got the hatch on top of the airplane. There's a little thing holding it down and it's taped down perfectly uh, you've got a metal spinner uh, the blade that comes with it is a carbon fiber blade that matches the paint scheme <laughs> the wing spar is a carbon fiber tube that comes in its own individually packaged wing spar. The landing gear, I don't want, I didn't even undo this. The landing gear is not only in its own bag, completely assembled. So it's screwed onto the metal brace of the landing gear. And it's also individually bagged and that bag is braced down by a piece of cardboard and taped down. 
and then they provide you with extra servo mounts if you were to change your servos out and you don't want to reuse the ones that are in there um the fit and finish and quality of this thing out of the box is uh, it's the best i've ever seen uh, the ink the ink was <coughs> The, uh, the complexity of the graphics and uh, the build quality. I mean, look at these pre-positioned screws uh, all, all put in place here and, and all ready to go to just pull out. This landing gear is going to install in like two seconds. Um, there's not a fingerprint on this airplane. It is just uh, everything is really... Uh, done outstanding. I haven't taken this off yet, so I don't want to put the wrong pressure on it. Um, the nose cone, the screws, I mean, it just, it looks like a custom aircraft kit that was built by the best builders. And, and there's not a fingerprint on it. Um, it's really done really well so i just wanted to take a break and uh and show you everything out of the box ready to go how it's packaged how it arrives um and the fit and finish and quality i'll tell you it's really above and beyond what we're seeing i mean just everything about this thing carbon fiber uh a rear wheel here all metal with a metal servo arm you know not nothing plastic everything is just uh i mean this this is uh, probably the best rtf kit that i've i've ever seen uh super super impressed uh so that's it so far um i'll i'll let you know how long the build takes and uh we'll we'll take a look All right, so I'm back for a minute. I want to show you the interior of this thing and, and how this works. I got into it. So it's magnetic. Uh, you got two points that kind of fit into the front end there. You see how that clicks in, and then it clicks down like that. Now, this thing isn't too bad to remove. You just put your two fingers on it and pop it up. Um, but obviously, you can tell the way it closes up under the cowling uh, closes up into the cowling there, it, it's, it's certainly not going to fly off or can't because the cowling actually goes over this thing. Uh, and again, the fit and finish in, uh, of these things, the fit is just, per I mean, that's perfect. The way that's set up, it doesn't allow air to get behind that so it couldn't lift off. So uh, again, I think really well done uh, in the magnetic points there. Uh, so this is inside the model and you've got a tube that leads your wing spar through uh, You know and then all the balsa and Again, I, I think the fit and finish of the build is is uh, really good really outstanding my first uh, Tip I would give you though. This is the carbon fiber wing spar that goes all the way through It doesn't have a terminating point in the wing so it helps if you make a center point line on the on the wing spar that way when you push it through the airplane you know where the middle is uh, if you don't have the middle point marked then it can just keep going it'll be farther into this wing than this wing uh, so marking the middle point on the wing tube you know i i think can makes it a little easier for you but uh, you got the battery tray here, and uh, you can see all the components wired in. Um, these connectors, not sure. I'm not sure if these are going to be compatible with uh, with a uh, spectrum receiver or not, but we'll see. Uh, but everything looks great. Uh, again, the fit and finish and quality of everything looks good inside the airplane. And uh, so that's what it looks like on the inside with that open. And the only build thing I've encountered so far is, like I said, if you just put a stripe on the middle of the wing spar, that kind of helps you out with knowing how far to push it in before you put the second half of the wing on. All right, so uh, the Bighorn is done. Uh, it took me about an hour. Took me about one hour to uh, to build it. Um, 
if I had any tips, uh, I used CA and uh, I used a little bit too much. So I got a little bit of that CA clouding around this joint here. I probably would have used a little bit less there. Um, I didn't have any issues getting these CA wicking tips to fit up. Um, make sure that this line is aligned perfectly before you put the glue on those CA joints. Now I thought I was gonna tape it in place, but I didn't need to. When you push the CA wicking joints in, it holds the tail all by itself. So, I mean, you can see this lines up really nice, but uh, you can adjust those just when you're inserting them. So the tail comes first. The other thing I, I might mention, just because I've, I've never seen this with a kit before, this kit actually doesn't come with any instructions. Now that having been said, I, I've literally built about six airplanes, um, all RTF kits. Uh, so uh, this is my sixth one, and this is by far and significantly the easiest build of all of them. And it probably mostly took me an hour just because like every time I put a part on, I'd wipe my fingerprints off of it and was drinking a cup of coffee. Uh, the landing gear, all these parts are pre-assembled. I mean, all you have to do is take these off. And so like, you know, I put one in and then I, uh, and then I Loctited the other two, and then I took the one out and Loctited the third one. Uh, there is another video out there where I saw that. It was a good technique, and I used it. The only thing I haven't done is uh, set up these servo horns, but that's mostly just because I don't have a receiver in it yet. I just built it. I'm not positive where I'm going to go with the electronics, um, but I wanted to get the aircraft built and hung and ready to go. Um, but yeah, it took me about an hour with very little building experience. Uh, I've me I measured from here to here when we put the tail on. So uh, that is, you know, put the wings on totally before you insert the elevator. Uh, and after you insert it, make sure that you measure like from this point to this point and then do the same thing on the other side. They came out 23, I believe it was 23 inches on the nose. They were perfect. Uh, CA glue and a screwdriver. I think those are the only tools that I used. Um, if I was to just go build another one right now and just not worry about the fingerprints, I could probably build it in 15 minutes. Um, super, super easy build. Uh, and I feel like I can't say enough about the fit and finish. Uh, I mean, you can see all these pieces here. I mean, I I've taken other kits out where the stickers are peeling up. Um, there, they are stickers. This isn't even stickers. It's coating and it's on there well enough to where it's not peeling up. Um, so I'm super happy with it. I uh, can't wait to, uh, get it fitted out. Uh, I may stick with the speed control that's in it. I'll probably stick with the speed control that's in it initially, uh, and then go with a three S S capable one so I can kind of amp it up a little, but, uh, that's the build, uh, it went super easy. Uh, if you wanted to do it quickly, you could probably get it done in 15 or 20 minutes. And if you're gonna super take your time, unpackage every part, examine it and take your time, it'll take you all of an hour. So uh, can't wait to uh, get it fitted out and get it flying. just like it's like it's nothing I did that same exact maneuver with another aircraft yesterday and the motor burned <laughs> and the motor burned out so I won't say which aircraft that was um, just getting a little more aggressive with bringing it in and and dropping uh, the throttle out and it just really handles terrific I'm not going to uh, push the flight time too long. We flew five minutes there. And there's our timer beeping right now. So there it is, the Ohio, Ohio Model Products Bighorn. Uh, I, I I feel like I can't say enough about this airplane. I'm uh, I'm super happy with it. 
I really wish that I, I was a better RC pilot and I could whip this thing around like I know it can do. Um, if you take a look, this is what I'm talking about. These aileron surfaces are just really, really large. Um, and just to give you guys an idea, so I'm obviously I'm using a spectrum setup here. Um, my dual rate is set to 60. I'm only moving these things 63% okay so and i already you know i feel like it's kind of now it's 30 percent expo already on aileron and we're gonna move that up to 50 percent um you know and these are all pilot pilot preference but with these control surfaces being the way they are and the type of flying that i'm doing uh now my elevator is only at 60 percent um, I would classify this as a stunt type aircraft. Uh, my rudder, I, I'm going to keep the rudder in, but the rudder is only moving 48% is all that we set that up for. And it's everything I needed out there. No issues whatsoever with having enough rudder authority or travel. And I'm only at 50% with zero expo. But I, I don't really like expo on the rudder. I want rudder when I want it. Uh, elevator is at 60% and aileron is at 63%. And both of them, I had them at 30 on the expo and I, and I wanted more. So now they're at 50. I think I'll be happier on the next flight. Um, so that's where my settings are at. Now, like I said, I, I am not a stunt pilot. My pilot abilities on a scale of one to 10 are probably like a two and a half. Um, so uh, I'm basically just pattern flying this airplane right now uh, with these extremely, extremely conservative settings. I'm sure if you upped the travel a little more and reduce the expo this thing would just do anything you wanted it to i mean those control surfaces compared to the other aircraft that i'm working with uh you can just tell that this thing would rock and roll so let's take it over to the stand and see what we have for battery this is a uh, 2250 c so um, one of the better 2200 packs that were available, certainly for, for numbers anyways. Let's, uh, so you just pop the magnets by the, by the windshield. Now, one thing I will say about this thing that you want to be careful of is you really want to not lift the windshield too high and slide it back out of the cowling. You can already see where I messed up and cracked the cowling a little bit. So again, you want to kind of bring the windshield down like this and then slide the windshield piece up under the cowling, then drop it down. And when you take it off, just the opposite. Lift it up about an inch or two and slide it out from under the cowling and then bring it out. And of course, like everything else on the airplane, metal, actually, no, they're not metal, they're wood but uh, they're everything you need them to be. But the, just look how straight they are, you know, just how well done that this stuff is. Uh, and then just how squared away all this stuff is. And of course you got these little cracks that I did myself. So uh, be careful when removing the windshield because you can crack it. So let's see, we got five minutes of flight time on that out of this battery. Let's uh, take a look and see where we're at for, uh, for juice. 47%, okay, so um, 3.8 volts per cell. So, I mean, I'm gonna go to six minutes, that's for sure. I'll definitely go to six minutes and uh, see where I'm at for cells. Of course, I'm always interested to see what the actual milliamps return is into the battery. Well, hopefully, I'll, I'll clip back to that. All right, so I'm back with uh, the battery pack that we flew on the Bighorn. And uh, I was actually, I double checked the timer and the timer on the remote is actually set at six and a half minutes. So this Hobby Star 
50C 2200 at six and a half minutes of flight time. And it was just as we were pulling up, it, it was expiring. Only put back 696 milliamps into the battery. So I, now of course I'm not out there doing full throttle passes, inverted and, and, and you know, flying it very hard. But I mean, at that rate, could probably pull 10 minutes so uh, I upped it to seven and a half minutes on the next flight and the battery was at about 42 percent that's this one and we'll see how this one comes out um, but seven and a uh, six and a half minutes of flight time only 696 milliamps so not even 700 milliamps so I want to say I could have got nine and a half minutes out of that flight, you know, flying it the way that I was. But there it is, uh, OMC Bighorn uh, build. I want to say that if I got another one of these, uh, if I when I set up my next one, I'm going to order a green one. Um, when I set up my next one. I probably have it built in 15 minutes. I mean, the build is just went really quickly. Uh, really happy with like the ball links. The ball links were, were good and quality product. Um, the control surface arm attachments are actually metal. You know, they're not plastic like a lot of other airplanes. These are actually metal with metal parts that lead to a ball. Um, just super quality. This this uh, tail wheel piece is actually carbon fiber, and this is all metal. All this stuff is all metal. It's like they just they just didn't take any shortcuts, and they just didn't put anything cheap on there. It's it's all. I love this landing gear. This landing gear is all aluminum, one piece up here, but then it's got like a separate piece for the wheel. And then this is the piece that goes on the outside so that the wheels are not just like up against a bolt. This is actually a spreader piece so they're up against more of a surface. And this isn't just one bolt riding through. It, it's, it's all aluminum. It's like an independent uh, axle. Um, just top quality stuff. It's just there's, there's nothing cheap on this airplane. It's, uh, it's all good stuff. So there it is, OMC Bighorn. Uh, I can't wait to put some more flights on it. That was my second flight. And uh, I'm really liking it so far. Uh, not the last loop I came in, but the one before that, I was actually able to put a nice bank on it and drop it, kind of slip it and lose altitude kind of quick. So I'm already kind of getting used to the aircraft. I've been flying four or five different airplanes in the last couple of days and uh, so you know everyone flies a little different but i'm just starting to get used to this one uh, i really like it i can't wait to put a lot more flights on it all right so just wanted to do some uh closing thoughts here on the bighorn and uh, show you my setup that i wound up going with i changed receivers out um, so the original receiver that I put in it was a six channel receiver uh, and it's not like that receiver wasn't getting the job done it was just with six channels you couldn't put each flap on its own channel um, and then I didn't really care so much about the flaps but the problem was that uh, the flaps need to go down together so I wound up having to put both ailerons on one channel because they move opposite of each other so they were perfect for going on a Y uh, and I didn't really like it like that the other thing was the other the other receiver I, I put in didn't have telemetry uh, so I wound up going with an AR 8010T receiver uh, and this is this is a, an eight channel receiver so everything has its own channel. So I'm, I'm using seven of the channels right now. I'm not using the eighth. Now, what I, what I did was I have this little, uh, these are extensions. So I took like four six inch extension blocks and I ran them up. I, I wound up just zip tying them together. Three inch extensions would be enough. 
uh, and I just glue them together. So if I wanna take the wings off of this thing, all I have to do is just unplug from this block right here, not from the receiver down in the airplane. So that was convenient. And obviously we have our little satellite receiver over there. So uh, I thought that was a helpful setup. And then if you come down here to the, um, you know, battery lead, you can see here's where I tapped in my wires uh, for the telemetry. You know, and then those just go back up under there and then back up and around and plug into the receiver. Uh, so I've got the telemetry on the battery. Uh, I've changed the way I run the batteries now. Instead of running them on a timer with telemetry, I just set it for 10.5 volts on a 3S or like 10.8 volts. And I just run it till I get my first warning. And then I turn around and then I come around and bring it in. And I'm getting seven and a half, eight minutes usually. About seven and a half to eight minutes on a 3S um, 2200 50C battery. Now I have a 2600 coming. Uh, also for location, I'm running that battery all the way up. There's like a firewall on this aircraft uh, at the front of the battery box. So the 2200s, I'm running right against the firewall. Uh, and, and again, another you know, OMP, it's just exactly what I would put in there. Uh, a Velcro with uh, with this on it, you put it in and tighten it up really easy. Um, just another quality part uh, they outfit the airplane with. Uh, I added a little Velcro strip here like I do on all my airplanes. Uh, so you run that battery right against the firewall if you're doing the 2200. Now, I would imagine, I didn't see any issues with uh, CG. I, I didn't feel like the aircraft was struggling at all. Um, I think it's going to fly very well with the 2600. Maybe shift it up this way, and I'm willing to bet it's going to get eight and a half, nine minutes. So keep an eye out for future videos. I'll be uh, trying some different size batteries with this and seeing what kind of flight time I come out with. Uh, yesterday I put five more flights on it, so I've had the aircraft for two weeks now and I have 15 flights on. Unfortunately, we've had a ton of wind, so uh, most nights have not been flyable. Uh, but uh, I had, uh, I think, three sessions with it and uh, I've got 15 flights on it. So there it is, the OMP Bighorn. Uh, I'd recommend if you're doing Spectrum, do the 8010 receiver. Put each thing on its own channel and that makes everything very easy to trim out. Uh, if you have any kind of issue going on, any kind of trim thing you need done, uh, everything being on its own channel is very convenient. Also, the 8010 has the telemetry, so all you gotta do is run the wire up and uh, hook it up to the battery lead and you've got your telemetry. And I, I have noticed there is a pretty big difference I and mean, it's not just a bighorn thing, it's any aircraft. I mean, if you're gonna, Go when you do four or five high speed passes, you definitely draw the battery down a lot faster. Um, I, can I can also say that after 15 flights, I haven't had any issues whatsoever with the landing gear. Uh, none of the graphics have come loose. Um, I haven't had anything. I haven't had a stripped servo. Um, I, I haven't had any issue with the aircraft whatsoever in the 15 flights. Uh, I managed to nick up this uh, cowling just a little bit by kind of ham handing this windshield but uh i got it cleaned up a little and uh you know hopefully i won't be doing that again but uh, i haven't had any issues with it uh, i've actually flown some touch and goes with it come down and, and uh put the wheels on the ground uh no issue flying loops or, or barrel rolls i kind of wish i had taken a video of the last couple of flights I, I just i wasn't shooting video there was there was a lot of people there uh, i was actually putting it through some more aggressive maneuvers up high and uh, the thing just i mean it really does it without a problem so there it is omc bighorn if you're thinking about it i say do it uh do it you're gonna you're gonna like the airplane uh, its capabilities are, are certainly uh, versus for its size and what it is. Uh, its capabilities are tremendous. And uh, I can't wait to dive into it and get a little more flight time with some different batteries uh, and get a little more aggressive settings into it and try some more aggressive maneuvers. Uh, those videos will be coming up in the future. GoPro, stop recording.